Hello, I'm Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall be looking at items covered in the wartime pilot's notes for the Spitfire 5's starboard or right side of the cockpit. As we work through the various instruments and switches, I shall refer to extracts from the 1942 Air Ministry Manual. So let's get going. With Spitfires fitted with the TR9D wireless installation, a remote contactor and contactor master switch is fitted on the right hand side of the cockpit, as shown here. Three spare lamp bulbs for the reflector gun sight are stowed in a holder on the right hand forward side of the cockpit. The upward identification lamp is mounted just after the aerial mast and the downward identification lamp is mounted on the underside of the fuselage between the main planes as shown here. They are controlled from the signalling switch box mounted on the right hand side of the cockpit. This switch box type B has a switch for each lamp on the upper edge and a morsing key here. The switch box provides for steady illumination or more signalling from each lamp or both. The switch lever has three positions Morse, Off and Steady. Here we have the Mark III version where the switch levers are mounted on the face of the device instead of the upper edge surface. The R3002 push buttons are fitted here and the R3002 master switch is immediately after these. The R3002 push buttons are the detonator buttons for the IFF Mark II, that's identification friend or foe, transponder. If the pilot had to force land over enemy territory, he would push these buttons to set off a detonator that would destroy the IFF receiver in order to stop it from falling into enemy hands. Basically, IFF was used to display an enlarged blip on UK chain home radar and thus confirm to the radar operator that the aircraft blip was friendly. In order that the pilot may lean forward without unfastening his harness, a harness release control is fitted to the right of the seat. Here is an AP diagram covering the pilot's harness installation. A sealed high pressure cylinder containing carbon dioxide and connected to the undercarriage operating jacks is provided for use in the event of failure of the hydraulic system. This cylinder is mounted here on the starboard side of the cockpit and the seal can be punctured by means of a red painted lever beside it. The handle is marked emergency only and provision is made for fitting a thin copper wire seal as a check against inadvertent use. This is the pilot's oxygen mask hose. We looked at the standard oxygen regulator unit in our instrument panel video. Here, a separate oxygen supply cock is provided in addition to the regulator. It is mounted on the starboard side of the cockpit. Whilst on the subject of oxygen, here is a view of the pilot's oxygen bottle mounted after the pilot's seat on the starboard side within the fuselage. A windscreen de-icing tank containing the de-icing solution is mounted here, directly above the bottom longer on, beside the right hand side of the pilot's seat. A windscreen de-icing cock is mounted above the tank and a pump and a needle valve to control the flow of the liquid are mounted below the undercarriage emergency lowering control. Liquid is pumped from the tank to a spray diffuser at the base of the windscreen shown here. 
from which it is sprayed upwards over the front panel of the windscreen. When de-icing is no longer required, the windscreen de-icing cock should be turned to the off position. If the Spitfire was carrying a jettisonable fuel tank, tucked down by the pilot's seat is the jettison lever. Here's an AP diagram to illustrate its detail. The undercarriage control selector lever, shown here, moves in a gated quadrant on the right hand side of the cockpit. An automatic cutout in the control moves the selector lever into the gate when it has been pushed or pulled to the full extent of the quadrant. A hydraulic valve indicator in the quadrant shows down or idle or up depending upon the position of the hydraulic valve. Up or down should normally show only when the selector lever is operated to raise or lower the undercarriage. And idle when the lever has automatically sprung back into the gate after raising or lowering the undercarriage. If with the engine not running the indicator shows down, it should return to idle when the engine is started. Finally, here is an AP diagram showing the arrangement of the hydraulic system in the Spitfire Mark V. Well, that's all we have for this video. I hope that you found this tour interesting. And remember, we are working on many more videos covering the Spitfire Mark V. Please click the free subscribe button below and also like to get notifications when our future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.